Christ alone. My hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm to the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are stilled, when striving cease. My comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. In Christ alone, who took on flesh, God in helpless faith, this gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones he came to save, till on the cross as Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied. of the world my darkness slain then bursting forth in glorious day up from the grave he rose again and as he stands in victory since curse is lost its grip on me for I mine, bought with the precious blood of Christ. No guilt in life, no fear in death, this is the power of Christ in me. From life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny. No powers of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand till he returns or calls me home. Here in the power of Christ, I'll stand. Good morning, everybody. My name is Mike Gallagher, and this is my wife, Kathleen. I'll be your preacher for today. Oh, you know that. Um, thank you for putting up with, uh, not not with Jack and with Pastor Miller. That's a wonderful combination. But putting up with me being gone. Um, my adventures and misadventures are at an end for a little while, I will hope. Um, got some things done. Quick run to Colorado Springs and back to help my son straighten away a few things and almost have the motor out of my 92 Corvette, but it got too hot. So the engine hoist is there, got the tranny loose, got the tranny jack underneath. You think I'm kidding. Uh, and then I need to jack it forward just a little bit, getting that harmonic balancer off so I can get that extra half of an inch. I might be able to reach the transmission bolts. <laughs> That's the fun I've been having, but it's good to see all of you folks. We are talking about a sword, and it's up there, the two-edged sword, even though that one's not very sharp. Uh, the one that our Lord wields, it's the rod of his mouth, is sharp indeed. And we're going to talk about that, and it leads us to the peace that we have between the Lord and ourselves because of that sword, and next week we're going to talk even further about the peace. But we have a good peace song here. Peace train. Oh, that's the wrong one. Uh, this one, though, you know, I think. All right, let me get the right service. 
I got peace like a river. So we're going to sing this. It's really easy. Let's all join together in this. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river in my soul. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river in my soul. I've got love like an ocean. Love like an ocean. I've got love like an ocean in my soul. I've got love like an ocean. Got love like an ocean. I've got love like an ocean in my soul. I've got joy like a fountain. I've got joy like a fountain joy like a fountain in my soul i've got joy like a fountain joy like a fountain joy like a fountain in my soul going to be utilizing uh, Divine Service Setting 3 that begins on page 184 if you'd like to follow in your hymn book. And uh, with that being said, why don't we rise as we join in our service. As we make our beginnings in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. O oh, Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserve your cruel and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of your innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this your confessions, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of us. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I can say our sins are forgiven us in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. For our intro at today, which is the time in which we have confessed and can symbolically and literally enter into the presence of God at his altar, we're going to use Psalm 119. And uh, I am the capital P, and you are the capital C. I think you'll hang, you get the hang of it. Look on my suffering and deliver me, for I have not forgotten your law. Salvation is far from the wicked, for they do not seek out your decrees. Many are the foes who persecute me, but I have not turned from your statutes. See how I love your precepts. Preserve my life, Lord, in accordance with your love.
Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We do, uh, well, what's in our next slide? We're going to join together, even though it doesn't show up in our bulletin, in our Kyrie and our uh, Glory in Excelsis. Glory be to God on high. with you. Let us pray, and let us pray together this collect, shall we? Almighty God, by the working of your Holy Spirit, grant that we may gladly hear your word proclaimed among us and follow its directing through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. And Steve is going to share with us our Old Testament from the book of Jeremiah. You can follow along uh, as he reads aloud as both our Old Testament from Jeremiah and our epistle from Romans and our gospel are in the back of the bulletin as well as on the screen. The Old Testament reading for this fifth Sunday after Pentecost is from the book of Jeremiah, 28th chapter. Then the prophet Jeremiah spoke to Hananiah the prophet in the presence of the priests and all the people who were standing in the house of the Lord. And the prophet Jeremiah said, Amen. May the Lord do so. May the Lord make the words that you have prophesied come true and bring back to this place from Babylon the vessels of the house of the Lord and all the exiles. Yet hear now this word that I speak in your hearing, and in the hearing of all the people. The prophets who preceded you and me from ancient times prophesied war, famine, and pestilence against many countries and great kingdoms. As for the prophet who prophesies peace, when the word of that prophet comes to pass, then it will be known that the Lord has truly sent the prophet. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading is from the book of Romans, the seventh chapter. Do you not know, brothers, for I am speaking to those who know the law, that the law is binding on a person only as long as he lives? Thus, a married woman is bound by law to her husband while he lives. But if her husband dies, 
she is released from the law of marriage. Accordingly, she will be called an adulteress if she lives with another man while her husband is alive. But if her husband dies, she is free from that law. And if she marries another man, she is not an adulteress. Likewise, my brothers, you also have died to the law through the body of Christ, so that you may belong to another, to him who has been raised from the dead, in order that we may bear fruit for God. For while we were living in the flesh, our sinful passions, aroused by the law, were at work in our members to bear fruit for death. But now we are released from the law, having died to that which held us captive, so that we serve not under the old written code, but in the new life of the Spirit. What then shall we say, that the law is sin? By no means. Yet if it had not been for the law, I would not have known sin. I would not have known what it is to covet if the law had not said, Thou shalt not covet. But sin, seizing an opportunity through the commandment, produced in me all kinds of covetousness. Apart from the law, sin lies dead. I was once alive apart from the law, but when the commandment came, sin came alive and I died. The very commandment that promised life proved to be death in me. For sin, seizing an opportunity through the commandment, deceived me, and through it killed me. So the law is holy, and the commandment is holy, and righteous, and good. Did that which is good then bring death to me? By no means. It was sin, producing death in me through what is good, in order that sin might be shown to be sin, and through the commandment might become sinful beyond measure. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We rise out of respect for the Holy Gospel and join in the triple Alleluia. person's enemy will be those of his own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Whoever receives you receives me. And whoever receives me, receives him who sent me. There is one who receives a prophet because he is a prophet, will receive a prophet's reward. And the one who receives a righteous person because he is a righteous person, will receive a righteous person's reward. And whoever gives one of these little ones even a cup of cold water because he is a disciple, truly I say to you, he will by no means lose his reward. This is the gospel of our Lord. Thank you, uh, Steve and Paul. While we remain standing, let us say what we believe in Father, Son, and Holy Spirit by the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Jesus Christ is only Son who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, Father Almighty. From that he will come to judge. The Holy Christian Church forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. 
You may be seated. Uh, we're going to sing a song that usually is reserved for Advent, but it is appropriate for today. Lo, he comes with clouds descending. Hymn 336. Michael, 
if you would just be quiet. They said it a little more blatantly. Michael, if you would just shut up. There was another who came that they wished he would have been quiet. And that was the one who was prophesied. This from Isaiah chapter 11, verse 4. It says simply, But with righteousness he shall judge the poor, and decide with equity for the needs and the meek of the earth. And he shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall slay the wicked. They would rather have had this man who was prophesied to come to be quiet. The medieval artists took this so seriously that they actually had some art. I brought one of my kids' sold toys. And they would have the sword coming from the mouth of the Messiah, of Jesus himself. I shouldn't be holding it there, but it's not that sharp. Because he was going to come and strike the earth. It says in our gospel, do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but I have come to bring the sword. Such odd words, it seems, from the Lord Jesus Christ, because we like to think of Him as the one who has come to just bring that wonderful gospel message of peace to all mankind. But we know there is no peace. When the Lord Jesus Christ came, He turned the world on its ear. We're told in Scripture that People would turn against each other in their own homes. Said a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a person's enemies will be those of his own household. That sounds very harsh, but it's so true, is it not? If your families are like mine, the pure Christian message causes problems, doesn't it? Especially if you're a little bit conservative. That means that you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as He is portrayed in the Bible and the words that we have in Holy Scripture. Not taking away from them. Not diluting them. Not digging into the Holy Bible to find the core of truth like you peel an onion. But you believe the Bible as it is. And when you do, and you open your mouth, what's the result? Ah, I remember, Michael, when you were young. I remember when you were 16 years of age and you just fill in the blank because there was plenty I did wrong back then. Thank God they didn't have cell phones and cameras back when I was a teenager because I would not be before you today. Be careful, by the way, of what you take a picture of and post because it never goes away. It's in the cloud. Lo, he comes with clouds descending. That's the tune I thought we were going to use, by the way. Hey, come back for the late service. I'm going to lead it with that. That wasn't Sam's fault. I should have told him, hey, use that other tune. But isn't that so true? In the cloud, there is one who comes in the clouds. And when he came down, in that fulfillment, do you recall the song of Simeon when he was Born and they came, and Jesus was very small, just eight days of age, and Simeon had been waiting and waiting to see the birth of the Messiah, and he finally saw it, and he burst out into song, but he also gave this warning to Mary. This found in Luke chapter 2, verse 34 and 35. And Simeon blessed him and said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is appointed for the fall and the rising of many in Israel and for a sign that is opposed. He will bring peace through his own soul, or a sword will pierce through your own soul also, so that thoughts from many hearts may be revealed. What happens when you can't see far away or close up anymore? I'm not sure how they correct that. Lasix. But... Mary was warned that a sword would pierce her own soul. 
And if the people were really, really open to what the Scriptures have to say, they would understand that this was a special kind of a Messiah. Yeah, he was going to come and bring a sword, but not the kind of sword they wanted. He, they wanted him to bring the sword and arrive with his 10,000 times 10,000 angels on his mighty steed. Lo, he comes in clouds descending and kick the Romans out. Stick a few of them with his mighty two-edged sword. But what did he do? He came just a mouth off. I say that because he came to say, you guys are not doing what you should be doing. And who did he address? Who was he the harshest to when he came down to this earth? Was he hard on those caught up in sin? Was he hard on those who had looked at themselves and say, Lord, forgive me, a sinner? Was he hard on those that came and fell at his feet? No, he was hard on the religious leaders. Because the religious leaders thought they had it made. They thought they were in with God. We're bobos. We're friends. Well, that comes from caveman. That means friend in caveman language. They thought they were tight with God because they were the ones who were leading the life that was according to the law of God. And yet Paul comes along and says, no, no, don't be relying on the law because what the law does is it slices into us. That law is what shows us that we're sinful about in our lives. We are covetous. We are adulterous. We misuse the Lord's names. We, well, name, we just go on and on. You know the commandments, don't you? And you've heard me say many times, those commandments are not here to make us feel good doesn't make me feel good. I don't go through the commandments and the meanings and walk away going, oh yeah, that felt so good. It made me feel so bad. But the fulfillment of that, the one who was to come to change the world, it's always a study in paradox because Jesus Christ came down here. Where do you think all of those health institutes came from? Those institutions that are in Europe and America. And even in Canada. Well, they're all St. Francis. Well, we got one right here. St. Francis, right? The Order of St. Francis. Where did that come from? Where did all of the humanitarian efforts and the schools that were developed come from across Europe and our own system? It came from Christians. You see, that message of Christ came here and it turned everything up on its ear and he took the establishment and he said, no, nah, you got it all wrong. You got it all wrong. You think you got it all right, but it's all wrong. Did you ever take a test like that in school? You felt real good about it, didn't you? You turn that in, you're sitting in Mr. Smith's class and you say, ah, I know this stuff. And you get the test back and you got 9 out of 10 wrong. That happened to me one time. Only one time out of all the... Should I tell you how many semester hours I have in college? Oh, God. 300. 150 of those graduate. I'm educated well beyond my intelligence. But you know what? I took church polity, and I thought I had it down. Dr. Klotz's office. I knew that man. I had this and that, and how this church came together with that one and who was in charge of here and where did it all go and how did we all separate and come back together again and blah de blah and I got back that test and it was a D. And look at the job I have dealing with church polity. No wonder we're in such a dire strait. No wonder it took us six months to get a call list when we were promised it in six weeks. That's my dig. Uh, but the paradox is there. You got that edge of the law. He opened his mouth to the scribes and said, you don't have it right because, yes, you're right about the letter of the law, but the law is there to cut into us, to show us that we are sinful. You're not going to make up for the evil that you do and the sinfulness that you do by leading a good life. Do you guys believe that? Years ago, in 1971, in Generations, it appeared that they took a, um, a survey of Lutherans and Missouri Synod Lutherans. And they said, how are you saved? What was the number one answer? You lead a good life. 
follow God's law. Oh yeah, and Jesus. Oh yeah, don't forget him. Now you guys wouldn't say that. You would go, it's Jesus. You'd say it like a preacher. It's Jesus. Can I get a witness? Can I? I don't hear any amens. The edge of God's law to cut into men. But there's also for Jesus, and it's always about a paradox. So they changed the world when he came. All of these wonderful things happened, but look at all the wars that have happened. I was told once that more people have been murdered and butchered in the name of Christ than in any other name. And that's sad. That's sad. All the wars, the wars and the rumors of wars. Even Putin over there is saying he's going to reestablish the Holy Russian Empire. And that has roots in the Holy Russian Church. Anyway, the edge of the gospel. In Isaiah 53, what do we read? Because this is that section that talks about him being a suffering servant that was to come. And what does it say? He was pierced for us. He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on Him. And by His wounds we are healed. You see, that sword that He brought, it's like getting out there when you're a kid. I saw my son one time. I gave him a really nice Japanese sword. And he was out there smacking on one of the local trees and it was bouncing back at him. What could go wrong? Um. But that's what Jesus did with that sword. He allowed that sword of the law to come back and pierce Him and wound Him so that a wonderful thing might take place. He allows the sharp law to strike into His spirit and His soul to tear His flesh so that peace might be made again. You see, Jesus came down here not to bring peace, but the sword. He was coming down here to do battle. We run into this in Romans 16, just an example. The God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. The grace of our Lord Jesus be with you. Paradox. He came to do battle with sin. He came to do battle with the sin that was striking us, that was tearing us down. That's what Paul was talking about in that really convoluted epistle that uh, Steve read very beautifully to us. Likewise, my brothers, you also have died to the law through the body of Christ so that you may belong to another, to him who has been raised from the dead. And it goes on, he talks about this. For sin, seizing an opportunity through the commandments, deceived me and through it killed me. So be the law as warm and fuzzy, but Christ came to fulfill the law for us, to live the perfect life in our place. But he came to die for the condemnation that that law brings. What Paul meant was if there's no law, you don't know you break the law. Steve Martin years ago said that. He goes, try this next time, that you get stopped. You say, I didn't know it was against the law to go 65 miles an hour through Washington Square. I didn't know that it was against the law to rob a bank. He says, give it a try. Well, without the law, you don't know something's wrong, right? But when the policeman stops, he goes, ignorance of the law is no excuse. But now that we know, with knowledge comes responsibility, and we know we're under condemnation, the condemnation of the law. Except Christ didn't leave it at that. Because he lived the perfect life for us that was demanded. He's the one that didn't get a D in church polity. Of course, he didn't want to go to church polity because that's of the devil. But he is the one who makes straight A's. Absolutely, 100%. Did you ever have a student that did that, Mr. Smith? Hardly ever. Were they ever perfect? Did they ever get 100% on everything they ever handed in to you? close. That's like saying there's a 40 foot drop here and I'm going to jump from this building across the alley to the other one and it's 10 feet away. I'm going to get 9 feet 11 inches and a half. I got close. Boom! Doesn't work with that. 
Okay. Came down here to do battle with sin, with the devil. We're not strong enough to fight that spiritual warfare by ourselves. You think the devil isn't bothering you? Oh, yes, he is. Yes, he is. He is at work in all of our churches. He goes especially after the churches. He goes especially after the leaders of the church. He goes especially after the pastors of the church. Why? Strike the shepherd and the sheep will scatter. What's the easiest way to destroy a congregation? Go after the pastor. It's not just this place. It's a lot of places. I just went through a conference last week. Uh, I did it through Zoom. And to Zoom on this face was scary. Was scary. But I'll tell you what. You wouldn't believe how many things are out there. Embezzlement and adultery and misconduct of one type or another or just sheer laziness. Or It goes on and on and on. And I'm not talking about the parishioners. I'm talking about the preachers who should know better. But he came to do battle on their behalf and on your behalf against Satan himself and all of his fallen angels. And the final enemy to be destroyed is death. That's what we were told about being raised. Paul said that, didn't he? He talks about being raised. To him who has been raised from the dead in order that we may bear the fruit of God. This is our job now. He pierces our souls so that his sunshine, S-O-N shine, might come in and illuminate us. And we are told to take up the sword and follow him. We pierce the things around us. That's hard to do, and you're not going to be very popular when you go running around with any semblance of God's law. You're not going to be very popular if you run around the other edge of that and talk about the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ and never walk around with a real sword. It gets you in trouble. I knew a kid that actually... Oh, I won't go into it. Let's just say you cut somebody's arm off because they insulted his girlfriend. I don't make this stuff up. It's in Colorado Springs. Stay away from the springs. They're wild out there. But we have peace with God. Although, even though we have peace with God, we still deal with tribul tribulation. In me you have peace, it says in John 16, 33. In the world you will have tribulations. But take heart, I have overcome the world. Even though we have peace in our hearts, peace like a river that has been made because of the battle that Jesus did for us, we're still going to have problems with this world. We're still going to have tribulation and strife and heartache and war and pestilence, and plague, and people going their own way instead of following God. We're going to follow up and talk more about peace with God next week and some songs dealing with that. But in conclusion, I want to talk about another paradox, which is that at the end times, according to Matthew 25, Jesus is the one who led the life of perfection for us. Jesus is the one who laid down his life so that we might live. And who is it that's going to sit on the throne of judgment? Is Jesus Christ. Isn't that wild? The Savior of the world is going to be the one who says, I never knew you, and cast forth those people who did not believe. The great judge of mankind. It's all about a two-edged sword. You can't have one without the other. In the blessed name of Jesus, amen. That was funny, okay. Let's rise and sing our offertory. It's on page 192. Create in me a clean heart.
you may be seated. Let us return back a little bit of what our Lord has given to us in an abundance. We pray for the special needs of this congregation and for this world. Um, amongst those prayers, we're going to be praying for um, those people who are having difficulties um, in mind and body and spirit. Uh, we do pray for Bob Gustafson's sister, Ann Winston. We'll continue to pray. Uh, unless things have changed for her, if they have, um, forgive me because I've been gone. We pray for the situation in the Ukraine. Should we or shouldn't we? Uh, we pray for the call committee as they pour through the names that we finally got. Uh, we pray for Aaron and Nicole. They're having some difficulties in there in personally, personally. Um, and we thank the Lord for rain. Uh, we could use more, everybody says, but hey, we'll take what we are given. After which I will have you rise for the Lord's prayer. We do, Heavenly Father, thank you for all that you provide for us for being with us, Lord God, and even though it's a difficult thing to feel the strike of that sword, that's a wonderful message to know that there is a balm in Gilead, that you have pierced us so that the sunshine might come in and we might truly see ourselves as you do, so that we might, with your help, be able to fight sin, death, and the devil. Thank you for that kind of victory, Lord God, that you have given to us, because no matter what happens, the final victory is yours. Lord, in your mercy, we thank you for the rain that we have gotten, Lord God. I know um, the corn and the soybeans and other things that are growing certainly need it. Help us, Lord God, to get through this difficult time. Continue to send your rain. As you say, you send the rain upon the righteous and the unrighteous alike. We thank you for that rain, Lord God, and we would ask that you give us another bit of rain, only in a quiet and a peaceful manner according to your will. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, we do pray for all of those who are having difficulties. We pray for um, Ann Winston. We pray for Matt Crum as he is healing up and doing well. We pray for Nicole who continues to have her difficulties. Help these people, Lord God, to know your will and to know your way. Give them always that wonderful gift of knowing that they're never forsaken, they're never forgotten. Help them, Lord God, spiritually, and give them that healing touch they need. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the Ukraine, Lord God, the people over there, the, oh, the chaos that is ensuing, Lord God. Let there bring some kind of a resolution. You are the Lord of the nations. Thy will be done, Lord God. Take this situation in hand, and we do make a claim on peace even in the midst of the swords being drawn. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for our call committee as they pour through the 14 names, the 14 people that 
you have sent. Help them, Lord God, to know your wisdom and to know your way. Help them, Lord God, to know and help all of us to know who we should extend that call to to come and serve here in this place and at this time. We pray for Aaron as well, Lord God, who is going through problems, uh, looking for another job now. Help them, Lord God. It's a difficult time for this family. Be with them, though, Lord God, and bless them even so. Lord, in your mercy, all of these things we pray boldly in the name of your Son, Jesus, as we rise and join in the words which he has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. Now take the blessing of our Lord into your hearts and into your homes, and know that wherever you go, your Lord goes with you as he lives in here and in here. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. You may be seated. We're going to finish up with a little song. And the final one is Jesus lead thou on. And that's hymn 718.
Because we can gather here freely. We can worship as we see fit. We can have our opinions. We can live pretty much the way we want. We can drive from the East Coast to the West Coast and not be stopped at every border. We have freedom like no other country ever has on the face of the earth at no time in the past. But we can never take that freedom for granted. So as we move into this 4th of July weekend, another celebration of our freedom from tyranny to be self-determined, let us pray. We do, Heavenly Father, thank you for all that you provide for us. We thank you for the freedom that you have given to us in this country. Let us never take it for granted. We have been freed from the curse and the condemnation of the law, but we also have been freed from having the dominion and the domination of other individuals and other countries over us. Thank you for that, Lord God. Be with us. Let us ever stand for what is right. Stand for freedom, not only here, but in all places. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's sing the two verses of God Bless Our Native Land. And out of respect for our good Lord and our flag, which is hidden in the corner, let's rise. Mm -hmm. 